you can have a cosmos that is a bounded infinity and perhaps if there's a God then his infinity is also a bounded infinity. If I can answer briefly, there's, there's no question that there can be immaterial infinities. I'll give you one right now. The sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Keep counting and you can go on forever. There's no place you have to stop. If you're talking about something immaterial like numerical values, we know that can be an infinity. So if God is immaterial, as the Christian God is taken to be immaterial, not having a body, there's absolutely no intellectual or conceptual problem with an immaterial being being infinite. The problem is we don't know of any material infinities. If somebody says, here's a seashore and it stretches for miles and the number of grains of sand on it is infinite, the answer is, sorry pal, it's a lot, but it's probably not infinite. So the question was a very good one, are there material infinities? And the answer is, we're not sure, probably not, but it's no problem with the idea of God being infinite. All right, here's a question um, that I'm going to assume that neither of you have ever gotten, so we'll try it out. Um, it actually goes for both of you, so uh, Dinesh, uh, what is the best evidence or argument for atheism? And then Dan, I guess the opposing question would be, what is the best argument um, or uh, evidence uh, for theism or Christianity? So kind of put you in each other's shoes for a minute. The best argument for atheism, in my view, is, is one that Dan alluded to but did not develop, which is the, uh, the prevalence of suffering and evil in the world. Uh, and the best argument for atheism is that God is powerful, God is good, so why then do we have as much suffering as we do? Why does a five-year-old kid get cancer? Doesn't God have the power to stop him? Uh, if he does, why doesn't he? Um, now, I do want to point out, by the way, Dan cited this as an example of how he became an atheist. To me, this is not an argument about God's existence. Uh, and here's why. Imagine if I uh, trusted my dad, and I thought him to be a great guy, very powerful, has all kinds of influence, a really good guy, loves me very much. And then I'm in a desperate situation. I really need help. I turn to my dad. Dad, help me. And he won't do it. For whatever reason, he won't do it. Do I conclude, well, therefore my dad does not exist? This would be idiotic. Obviously, my dad exists. I may change my opinion of my dad. I may go, why doesn't he help me? What's wrong with him? In other words, my point is I may have doubts about the character of my dad, but not about his existence. So to me, the problem of suffering is fallaciously advanced as an argument against the existence of God, but for a lot of people, a lot of people lose their faith or reject their faith because they claim to object to the character of God. I, th I think you're right. Uh, the 